Riding at Home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. Welcome back to our Austin Board of Realtors Driving at Home podcast. I'm Kalea Youngblood, your Chief Marketing Officer here at ABOR, and I'm here with Dr. Claire Losey, our housing economist, who's going to give us an update for this week. Hey, Claire. Hi, everyone. Well, here we are, another week. We're in the middle of August. Why don't you uh, tell us what's going on with the inflation numbers? They were released last week. What does it suggest about the economy going on? So first of all, we saw that the CPI or consumer price inflation, which is a measure largely of demand, rose on a year over year basis at 3.2%. That was slightly lower than the expectations of 3.3%. And on a year over year basis with respect to core inflation, which strips out those more volatile categories of food and energy on a year over year basis, inflation rose 4.7%, which was in line with expectations essentially. So overall, the CPI was not fairly in line with expectations. However, on the supply side, our measure, the producer price index or PPI, came in a little bit higher than expected. On a year-over-year basis, the PPI measured 0.8%, while it was forecasted to have increased 0.7%. So broadly speaking, what's going on right now is the financial markets are trying to reconcile the more optimistic CPI numbers with a little bit less optimistic PPI numbers. So overall, we're just seeing kind of mixed signals in the market right now as investors are digesting this information. So what do you think, you know, in the crystal ball, what will we see another rate hike from the Federal Reserve this year? What are your thoughts on that? That's really the biggest question on the table right now. And I think that's something that markets are trying to sift through. And that's why we're seeing a little bit of unease, especially in the bond market. Moving forward, the market has broadly anticipated that they don't expect the Federal Reserve to hike its Fed funds rate again in 2023. However, the Fed did chart in its summary of economic projections, it did pencil in two additional rate hikes back in June, the first of which we've already seen, and the second of which we have not. So that would indicate that we're we're poised to see another rate hike, if not later in September, moving into the October-November meeting. That, that's really good for our agents to know, you know, because now would be a great time to buy and go ahead and plant that flag if potentially we are going to see another rate hike this year. Right, right. If we do, though, I will say it will probably only be to the tune of 25 basis points or 0.25 percentage points. So that's not a considerable rise per se, but certainly something to consider. Okay. Yeah. So what does that mean for the housing market? Well, broadly speaking, mortgage rates averaged about 7% last week, covered around 6.96% nationally. So we're in a higher rate environment right now. And certainly if we see another rate hike by the Federal Reserve, we would anticipate that the mortgage rate would increase even modestly. Right now, what's really happening with mortgage rates is that the bond market is a little bit volatile right now, again, with the release of the inflation numbers and and investors are trying to reconcile the um, more optimistic CPI numbers with the higher than expected PPI numbers. So the 10-year treasury yield has increased over the past week or so, and that's pushed mortgage rates up. So you're saying that the mortgage rates averaged a recent high of about 696 as of last week, why are they remaining so elevated? So we've had a couple of unforeseen events over the past several months, really, that have caused mortgage rates to remain at elevated levels. So the first of which is, of course, the collapse of the three regional banks in the spring, and then later in the spring, the debt ceiling impasse. More recently, the Fitch ratings downgrading of the U.S. credit rating from AAA to AA+, has caused the 10-year T-yield to rise and has kept mortgage rates elevated. 
So overall, broadly speaking, higher higher mortgage rates, you know, are tied to a higher ten year T yield, which is indicative that investors are just a little bit more cautious about economic sentiment moving forward. So with that said, what do you think rates will look over, like over the near term? Do you think they'll they'll stay the same? I think it's likely that mortgage rates will remain elevated. They may decline modestly, but I think it's likely actually that mortgage rates will remain fairly elevated over the next couple of months. Okay. It just seems like we aren't yet in a position in the market to see any sort of considerable decline in mortgage rates. That's helpful to know just as we go into the second half of the year and people are you know, finishing out their summers of you know, what's going on with regards to interest rates. So let's recap. Let's move along and recap what's going on with this week's housing stats. Any information for us? Absolutely. So we saw a little bit of a decline in activity last week. So closed sales throughout the MSA declined actually about 27% last week. So we have to remember that we're coming off, we're now coming off the very popular spring and summer home buying seasons. Of course, Austin ISD started yesterday. So overall, folks who are trying to move to get into the school district, they've already settled into their homes. And of course, still elevated mortgage rates have posed a little bit of drag on sales. So overall, active listings remained fairly flat. But again, we saw that decline in sales. Meanwhile, on the leasing front, in the Austin MSA itself, we saw closed leases down about 35%, an uptick in active leases, but a significant decline in in closed leases. So again, just indicative that we're coming out of that ever popular spring and summer home buying season, and we'll see a little bit of a readjustment in activity over the next couple of weeks, probably. We'll be releasing our housing sets for July. Can you give us a little teaser as to what we might see? I know we'll do a deep dive next week, but is there any maybe like top three points that we can think about? Absolutely. So one of the most important factors to consider now moving forward is that we're in more of an analogous apples to apples type comparison with our housing stats. So last year, in June and July is really when the, the housing market in Austin began to turn. And that's when when the effect of higher mortgage rates was really beginning to appear in our housing stats. So we've continued to see price declines. Um, the median sales price is down about 10% on a year-over-year basis. However, um, the extent of that, the magnitude of that decline is less than we've seen over the prior couple months. So again, just pointing more towards that more apples to apples type comparison within the market. Meanwhile, closed sales were essentially flat at 0.6%. And then what was interesting, really interesting to me is that pending sales were up about 14, 15%. So indicative that the combination of essentially flat sales on a year over year basis, but significantly higher pending sales indicates that potential buyers are becoming a little bit more accustomed to the higher rate environment. We're still going to see buyers on the margin, you know, affected by those those still elevated rates. But overall, just broad indication that that folks have realized that higher rates are probably here to stay. Well, thank you for that. We certainly appreciate it. We're wrapping up another week of our Driving at Home podcast with our housing economist, Dr. Claire Losey. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. All right. We'll see y'all again next week. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye.